بسم اللہ والحمد للہ اصلاۃ والسلام علیہ رسول اللہ اما بعد رب شاہلی صدری و سلی عمری بحل العدم السانی اب قو قولی السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر بردرس ٹوڈے ان شاء اللہ وی ول کنٹینیو آر اسٹڈی آف سورہ یاسین اینڈ وی ول ٹرائی ٹو کمپلیٹ دس سورہ ان شاء اللہ ٹوڈے اینڈ کور فرام آیا نمبر فورٹی فائیو انٹل ایٹی تھری سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ اعود باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan, the outcast, the cursed one. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. Starting with ayah number 45, um, Surah Yaseen. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّقُوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And when it is said to them, fear what is before you, and what is behind you, meaning what you're doing in this life, so before death, and then after uh, what you leave behind uh, when you go to hereafter in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَا لَكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that you may receive mercy. So we should be really fearful. And by fearful, it all, it's also meaning that we should be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Um, on how we are leaving this life or how we live this life and how what we are leaving behind in this life uh, as well. And when we are conscious and we follow the guidance, then we expect mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek his forgiveness if we have made any mistakes. وَمَا تَعْتِيهِمْ مِنْ آيَاتٍ مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَّا كَانُوا أَنْهَا مُعْرِزِينَ And not comes to them of a sign from the signs of their Lord but they turn away from it. And now we will see a list of multiple signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention that should actually give us Iman. And also the sign is in itself, uh, the Quran itself, the revelation from the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know the time uh, in, during which the surah was revealed is during the Makkah period when the opposition was really strong from the chiefs and, uh, of Makkah and the non-believers who were uh, opposing the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this revelation is coming as a sign for you. And we will go through today's lesson as well that the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a messenger, a warner for those people who were not following the guidance and who were doing uh, mischief, corruption and zulm on people. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَمُ اللَّهُ And when it is said to them, spend from what has been provided to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very, very important. It's not like spend from what you own. It's not like spend from what you own yourself because we don't own anything. It's not like we were born and I can say, oh, when I was born, I had these gold chains and I had this wealth and I had already had a bank account this. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to spend in the way of Allah, to help other people from what he has given us. We were never the owners and we'll never be owners. When we die, we die empty hands, right? And we go into our graves without any money or without carrying anything with us. So we have to spend from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already provided us in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you understand this concept, then spending in the way of Allah will become very easy for you. قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا so said those who disbelieve to those who believe. Now the disbelievers are making an argument against this instruction. So the instruction came, spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help the needy people, help those who don't have. Now the disbelievers, what did they say to the believers? Should we feed whom if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, he would have fed him. So this is their argument. If Allah wanted to feed him, then he would have fed him himself. Why should we feed in antum illa fi zalal mubin, not you are not except in a clear error. They are telling the believers, you guys are in error. Why are you spending on the poor? Let them suffer. If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wanted, He would have given him, uh, him himself. What they are not understanding is the extra money or wealth that they have is a test for them. Will they be greedy and hold on to it, or will they spend it on others? And those people who do not have, their test is that they have to have patience and continue to strive and struggle and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. Both types of people are going through a test. But here, the disbelievers are telling to the believers, oh, you are in a clear error. Why are you helping the poor? Why are you wasting your money in helping the poor? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, he would have given them. However, actually, they are in clear error. Now, um, who will tell me here what is the meaning of spending? 
And when we do spend, then what happens to our wealth? Whatever comes to your mind. When we spend, then what happens? Actually. Yes, Abdullah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. It means that uh, we have to give sadaqa, uh, charity in uh, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we give uh, to the poor, it uh, uh, it is mentioned that it doesn't inc uh, decrease our wealth uh, in any way. And yeah, that's all. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much, Abdullah. I also got an answer in chat from Sayyid Faiz. It decreases when we spend in real life. Perfect. Yes, this is exactly the answer that I wanted. Jazakallah khairan, Sayyid Faiz. And Jazakallah khairan, um, Abdullah as well. And you're right that when meaning of spending is here is spent essentially means spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving money to the poor. And we know the mandatory form of spending is zakat, which is two and a half percent of the extra hoarded wealth that you had. And there are, I mean, details in FIP on how you should spend and how you should calculate the 2.5 percent. I will not go into that detail. And then there is over and above that we can give as sadaqat, as sadaqa jariya, as multiple other uh, things that we can spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically, um, now, if you have $100 and you spend 40 then how much is left? Who will tell me? Math question. If you have $100 and you spend 40 how much is left? You can write it in chat if you want. Yeah, sir. Uh, it's 60 $60. Okay, good. So is it less than 100 or more than 100 um, it's definitely less than 100. So when we are spending, then our money is decreasing, right? Yeah, yeah. And this is exactly what Sayyid Faiz also mentioned earlier in the chat. It decreases, uh, it decreases when we spend in real life, right? However, um, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, and this is the promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when we spend, it will return multiple times. So, I just wanted to highlight this fact and I want you guys to remember this throughout your life. And this is a very, very important lesson for us as a Muslim. Now, it's a fact that if you have $100 in your wallet or in your hand and you spend, let's say, 40 or 50, then the remaining amount will be less at that point in time. We all know this simple math fact of life. So momentarily, when we spend in the way of Allah or anything else, like whenever you spend, the money is gone from your hand and we have less money at that point in time. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pro promise is for the believers that when you spend, he increases and he multiplies it in this life as well as in the hereafter. And that means, and by the way, if you look at the promises made to the believers, we have to be patient in getting that reward, right? So for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do halal things, don't do haram things. The reward is when? The reward is in the Akhra. The Jannah, the big promise reward is in the Akhra. And for that Akhra to happen, we have to wait a little bit. However, we know when we do a lot of halal things and we abstain from haram things now, even science is proving and now multiple researches are being done on different things, um, that it is beneficial for us in this world as well. But the big promise of Jannah is something that you have to wait. Same thing applies to Spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, when you are spending, it is decreasing from your wallet. And you see it going away. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own ways of returning you this money multiple times in this world as well as, well as the hereafter. Right? So if you understand this point, then the most important thing um, related to spending is... Um, that you have to spend, of course, by having this belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return it multiplied because this is the promise. Now, one thing that I want to highlight, and this is again very, very important. Whenever a need will come in front of you, like for example, somebody is asking for help, or you think that, you know, uh, you get a message that somebody needs some money or there is something needed, shaitan will come and put his vasasa. Every time when you want to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Shaitan will come and say, oh, what about the fees that you have to pay? Oh, what about that expense that is coming your way? Oh, maybe you should keep it for the future. And, you know, you have to save for this need and save for that. And you have to pay your house rent. 
and you have he will remind you of the expenses and he wants you not to spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala however when you want to spend on fulfilling your desire or something on something you know not important and it's not in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala he will encourage you and you will keep on spending and spending and spending and not even a thought will occur to your mind that you know what about the future expenses and all of these things this is a fact that all of you will witness inshallah you will uh, already maybe you guys are already earning or you're going through jobs or you will start your own business you will see that when it is spending in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala you will get a lot of thoughts of future poverty future uh, things future expenses oh my god i should save and what happens and if that happens then i should have this much wealth and finance and all these assets and all of that but when you are not spending in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala when you are just wasting money you will not even get a single thought so this i want you to remember as a whisper from shaitan so the learning for us which is very very important is you have to always remember it is allah subhanahu wa taala's promise that when we spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala it gets multiplied in this world and we get the reward in the akhira so think of it as your investment especially for the akhira as well yeah right because we all are believe in heaven and we all believe that we want to really go to heaven and we want to protect ourselves from hell fire so we should spend now the amount of spending doesn't matter but the consistency is important you should consistently spend what do i mean by that that you should try to spend on a regular basis or on a monthly basis so for example if you are helping someone of there's a needy family within your relatives or family circle or if somebody needs help or let's say within your neighbors or within your friends or someone try to help and add those people to your risk meaning when you are helping continuously someone then they you are the one you you become the wasila you become the um, the person by whom allah subhanahu wa taala is passing their risk as well the more people you add the more risk you will get from allah subhanahu wa taala and you will be able to pass it on to them but if you allah subhanahu wa taala gave you extra wealth and you were supposed to give it to other people but then you hold on to it then allah subhanahu wa taala will also hold back your risk because you're not giving them and they have to reach their risk has to reach them right so it will be given to someone else who will then pass on or they will get directly i hope you understand this point this is very very important in order to increase your risk in order to increase your wealth you have to help others and add them as part of your own risk and this you have to do consistently you cannot just give one time and then forget for months or years and then you do no you have to try and by the way again the amount doesn't matter it doesn't matter the amount doesn't matter the important thing is that you give because it cannot be for example right now you are earning 100 and you think oh i i wish i had 1000 or a million and then i would start spending in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala because right now i only have 100 so how can i spend no if you have 100 then try to spend 1 2 5 10 whatever you can if you have 10 try to spend 1 or 2 right and if you have million then you can spend a lot more or if you have 1000 then you can spend a lot more the point is it's not about the amount that you give it's your niya and you have to it's your intention and you have to make sure you purify your intention to please allah subhanahu wa taala and spend on his way so the lesson for us is if i were to summarize this discussion number 1 spending in the way of allah will increase your wealth of course at the moment you will feel that it is becoming less and this is where shaitan will attack but eventually it will increase all right so allah subhanahu wa taala will give you open doors of resources uh, of sources of well that you would have never even imagined so spending in the way of allah will increase your wealth and by the way i'll tell you one more thing if you search on um on on google or youtube and you try to understand the secret of wealth of even some of the non muslims who are really known to be wealthy you will find that they also spend and they also help people around them and you will see this is and they will say from their own mouth that yes because we spend and we help others which is why allah subhanahu wa taala increases our wealth or god increases our wealth or whatever they call but that's the concept and it is proven uh, abdullah you have your hand raised please go ahead you have a question or comment yes sir i have a question uh, so sir th- does that mean that we aren't allowed to uh, do savings and stuff 
uh, or we can do savings first and then uh, uh, besides it we can if we have some like uh, if we have a uh, fixed amount like we uh, we want to save some amount and besides the money that is left we can give that away so i, I have a question regarding savings sure so basically uh, I, I can answer it simply um, um what we are being told is that we should spend and uh, uh, whatever, so we should fulfill our needs, of course, and whatever is left over, the ideal is that you give it away. But yes, you can save and you can keep some money. The important thing is also to keep on spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, it should not become that you keep on saving only and not giving away. That way, that means you are holding on to all the risk. And you need to understand this thing. Let's say you earn 100 and you have extra after fulfilling your needs. And of, of course, all of us know needs. There is no ending to spending. You can spend the more entire 100, right? So, but based on your reasonable needs, you spend 70. Now you have 30 left. What you need to understand about this 30? Yes, you can keep part of it. You can keep 20. You can keep 10. You can keep the entire 30 as well. But the more you spend out of this 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase this 30 and increase your 100. This is the concept that I want to give you. And you have to be a believer in this concept. And you have to have patience. Because at that time, out of that 30, whenever you will be spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan will come, he will attack and everything else. However, it will get multiplied is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, to what extent a person goes is different and it varies from person to person. And we know the famous stories of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, Hazrat uh, Umar Ta'ala Anho, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Ta'ala Anho, how they were competing to spend in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and someone would bring in half of their uh, entire household. Someone would bring in the full household, like Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Ta'ala Anho. So it's just the levels that you have to cross because you are believing that yes, I want the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I am spending in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But yes, saving is not haram, so it's not like you cannot save. Yes, you can save, but it's just that from your saving of, let's say, the leftover amount of 30, in the example that I gave you from if you're earning 100, spending 70, 30 is left, to what level you want to go up to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depends on your individual taqwa, depends on your individual, how much you want more of the akhira versus dunya and everything. However, it is allowed to save as well. I hope I've answered your question. Okay. Um... Sorry, just, just... Yes, sir. Jazakallah khair. Okay, great. So, we were just quickly summarizing. Spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increase your wealth. Amount doesn't matter. Consistently is important. And try to add people to your risk, meaning regularly help people around you so that their risk also goes through you and then your risk grows and grows. If you hold everything to yourself, then maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find someone else to help them uh, and add them to their risk and not yours and then yours may get reduced as well. So we have to be careful. So this is the secret of increasing your wealth by spending. While momentarily it will feel like, oh, my money is going away and shaitan will attack you. However, eventually the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that it gets multiplied. Moving forward. And they say, when is this promise? If you are truthful, when will the day of judgment come? Because they were not believers. Not they wait except a shout, one that will seize them while they are disputing. So they are just disputing about the, the, the day of judgment and akhra. A loud shout will come and seize them. And they will be just talking about it and disputing about it. Then not they will be able to make a will and not to their people they can return. So it, they won't have any, at that point in time, they will not be given time to do anything. Time will be up. And will be blown the trumpet on the day of judgment. And behold, they will be rising uh, they'll be hastening and running from their gates to their Lord. So we, they'll be, you know, uh, coming out of the ground like you see a sea of ants coming out and they'll be all hastening, they'll be all buried. What will happen? And they'll be all running to their Lord on the day of judgment. This will happen. 
and we have discussed it multiple times. This day of judgment is coming like, you know, um, tomorrow is Sunday and then Monday and then Tuesday. This is coming. It's a reality. And we have been told the few, it's like, we, it's it's like time travel into the future. Already Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what will happen in the future. This is the day of judgment. This is exactly what will happen. They will say, oh, woe to us. Who has raised us from our sleeping place? And how come we are uh, going up and woe to us? So they will they will be cursing themselves that we wish that we had believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The promise is now clear. We are being, we are rising up again. So when they were alive, and when the message was brought to them by the Holy Prophet Muhammad they did not used to believe, oh, so we will be getting up once we have turned into dust. This was their argument. And once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and once that will be happening, they'll be saying, woe to us that, you know, how come we did not listen to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi That is what was, what is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious and what told the truth, the messengers. So all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they brought in the same message and a warning. Not it will be, but a shout, a single shout. So behold, they uh, will be brought to us, all of them. It is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will be a single shout. All of the people will rise from their graves and they will be turning back and their bodies will be returned and everything else and they will be running towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a single shout, in a single thing and it is very, very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it happen. So this day, not a single soul will be wrong, meaning whatever you did, you will get either the reward or the punishment. There will be no wrong justice because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge of everything. Absolute knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolute justice will be served. There will be no one who will be wronged in anything. And not you will be recompensed except for what you used to do. Everyone will get the reward or punishment based on what they did. And it will be 100%, 200% accurate. Inna ashab al jannati jannati yawma fi shughulin faqimun. Indeed, the companions of the paradise on this day they will be occupied in amusement. They will be relaxed and they'll be chilling uh, on their thrones. And on this day, they will be the most relaxed ones. Hum wa azwajuhum fi zilalin alal ara'iki muttaki'un. They and their spouses in the shades on the couches and they'll be reclining. They'll be like relaxed. Alhamdulillah, you know, their test is over and their recliners and, you know, uh, they're just uh, watching everything uh, at peace. They will be the relaxed ones. Who will be the worried ones? who rejected the message, who did not follow the guidance, who did the haram things and did not do the halal things. So those will be the worried ones. The, 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 uh, those people who are, who have the, who, who will be given the good news of the paradise, they will be the ones relaxing and, you know, sitting on their thrones and couches and they'll be reclining, uh, relaxed. For them, therein are fruits and for them is whatever they call for. Whatever you will wish for, you will receive in Jannah and in paradise. Salam. Salamun qawlam mir rabbir rahim. Peace, a word from a Lord who is most merciful. They'll be greeted by salam uh, from the angels. Wam ta'zul yawma ayyuhal mujrimoon. But stand apart today, O oh criminals. Criminals will be separated like herds, you know, like the animals there, you know, you can separate and they will be thrown in a separate way. They will be treated uh, in a disrespectful way as well. Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adama. Did you, did I not enjoin upon you, O children of Adam? An uh, Allah, meaning you human beings, Allah ta'budu uh, ta shaitan, that do not worship the shaitan. What is the meaning of worship here? Following shaitan. By the way, these days uh, uh, there is devil worshipping concept also going up. But here the word worship means that they were the followers of shaitan and they were warned, all those people. Who, were, who will be herded separately. Those are the people who are the losers who will be punished. Innahu lakum adumu mubeen. Indeed, he is for you a clear enemy. And when are we reading this? We are reading all of this, alhamdulillah, before the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is painting a picture in front of us that this is exactly what will happen. Imagine tomorrow in your school or in your university, your teacher tells you that we are celebrating a day or whatever, let's say. Or we have a Quranic recitation competition. This is how people will be seated. 
Here are the participants. One by one, you have to come. You have to recite the Quran, and these will be the judges. The prizes will be given. So prepare accordingly. What will you do? Let's say you're taking part in the competition. You'll start to recite. You'll start to practice your tajweed, and you'll be doing. So you'll take some action. Why? Because you believe. Because your teachers tell you tomorrow is the Quranic competition, and this is how it will be. They paint a picture. You know. So you will. You you exactly imagine. You know that you have to stand in front of the stage, in front of everyone, and you will be practicing everything. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is painting the picture of the day of judgment. This is exactly what will happen. So we need to take action now. Alhamdulillah, this knowledge is coming to us today, and and we haven't we we haven't uh, uh, died, right? We are still alive. We are not in our grave, so we have time to correct our lives today, which is why this picture is being painted in front of us, and it will exactly happen. Um, nobody knows. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe day after tomorrow. Maybe next month. Maybe after a year, several years. But once we die, our accountability and judgment will start. So uh, we need to believe it as we believe everything else, and as we plan the days in this world, we have to plan the day of judgment as well and follow the guidance. So this is exactly how it will uh, happen. So um, uh, those people who did wrong, they'll be called out. They'll be separated. Oh, children of Adam, you were. Uh, you uh, you worship shaitan and indeed he was a clear enemy for you. <laughs> buduni and that you worship me hada siratum, siratum mustaqim. This is the straight path. So the straight path is that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we follow his guidance. Walakad azalla minkum jibilan kasira. And indeed he led astray from you a multiple, a multitude, a great multitude. Meaning Shaitan will be able to put majority of us on the wrong path. And majority of the uh, of us will not follow. And we have seen it multiple times in the Quran. We should pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us amongst the few. Those few who are on the right path. Because there are billions of Muslims um, in this world. And a majority of them, you know, they are not practicing Muslims. They are not really following the halal and the haram. They always find a way. While they are just born Muslim. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us or keep us amongst the few. Those who are successful. Those who are the practicing Muslims. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Afalam takunu taqilun. Then did you not use your reason. Use your intellect. Use your brain. Use your brain. All of this picture is being printed in front of you. Use your mind. And follow the right guidance. Hazi jahannamul lati kuntum tu'adun. This is the hell which you were promised. And now those people will be shown. Islaw hal yauma bima kuntum takfurun, but therein today because burned therein today because you used to disbelieve. And these people who were just separated, they'll be thrown into hellfire and they'll be burning because they used to disbelieve. And disbelief just does not mean that you are a non Muslim. Disbelief also means that you actually don't put Islam into practice. You're not um, leaving the things that you have been told to leave just because, yeah, yeah, it's okay. I mean, you know, you're taking everything so casually. So even Muslims sometimes disbelieve in a lot of things and they pick things that are easy for them. Ah, Fajr is so tough for me. I cannot wake up. Oh my God. No, no, no. I cannot. I cannot sleep early at night. So, you know, you just pick, we cannot pick and choose things. Once something is known that this is what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to do. There is no choice. Otherwise, if you don't do something and you know this is the right thing to do, that means you're not truly believing it, which is why you're not taking or you're not honoring it. You're not, you do, it's not important for you. This day we will seal on their mouths and will speak to us their hands and will bear witness their feet about what they used to earn. Just imagine the day. At that point in time, everyone will be worried about themselves. Let's say that person has done bad deeds. Now think with me his situation, his desperate situation. He would try to save himself. He can see the hellfire and he's being about to thrown there and being burned. He will say, no, no, Allah SWT, I did not do this. I did not mean this. I did not know. I did not watch anything dirty or whatever and I did not. And he will start to try to defend himself, but he will be helpless and his mouth will be shut. So... These are different parts of a human body, by the way. I'm sure you guys know. And there are different diagrams available on Google. And you can already see and observe your own body as well. Our own body parts will be a witness against us. Our mouths will be shut. 
So you cannot say, oh, but I mean, I did at that point in time, I was thinking and my friend and I this and I was and my heart. No, no, your mouth will be shut. All your body, body parts will be telling the truth. All of them will start to speak. So imagine here um, with our ears, everything we heard, were you listening to dirty music? Were you listening to music and you were always, you know, uh, your ear will say, were you listening, hearing um, backbiting? Um, with a, with a friend or were you were you hearing something that you're not supposed to hear your ears I mean imagine your ear just starting to speak you know right now it's listening 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 but this organ Allah SWT makes it like it starts to speak to be uh, in front of Allah SWT yeah yeah I'll tell I'll tell what he heard you say no 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 I just listened to a song and this guy will say no it was actually 1000 songs you know throughout your life so imagine and then your hands every action that we did with our hands everything that we did with our hands Whatever we signed, whatever we did with our hands, our hands will start to speak. No, no, I did not do this. The hand will start to speak. No, no, you did it like 25 times only. Similarly, your eyes, what you watched. No, no, I did not watch or, you know, I was not. Actually, I was like this. And when the scene used to come, I used to pause and I used to forward and I did not use. Your eyes will speak. Your eyes will like actually speak. No, he did watch it. He thought that his parents are away and nobody is watching him. So he was watching and he was sitting alone and he started watching. Your eyes will speak of what you watch that you are not supposed to watch, right? Similarly, legs, our legs will be speaking. Where did we use uh, the strength of our legs? Where did we walk towards? Were we going to um, parties that we were not supposed to go to? Were we, which way we were going? Were we moving to the, words, the wrong way or the right ways? Were we doing the right things or the wrong things? Our own body parts will be a witness against us. If you just imagine this situation, your mouth is shut. You cannot explain. You have hellfire in front of you. People are being thrown there and your body parts are speaking against you. This will be a helpless situation. We can protect ourselves. We can still ask for forgiveness. Whatever we have done so far in our lives, whatever um, uh, mistakes we have made, we can still go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can cry in front of him and we can ask for his forgiveness. And if he, Allah subhanahu wa forgives us, then all of our organs and everything, even if they are witnesses and everything else, we will be, um, we will be blessed with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa and we will be given forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa So please realize this helpless situation and try to change your lives from today and not even tomorrow because we don't know when our death will come. So the, 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 the lesson for us is we have to be always conscious of what we do all the time. Our organs, our own body will be witness um, against us. So whenever we are doing something and shaitan puts this whisper that, oh, you are alone. Nobody is watching. Your hands are watching. Your eyes are watching. Your own legs and ears are watching. And everyone will speak against you. So you cannot say, you cannot go to a place without your body. In this world, you cannot find a hidden corner without leaving aside your organs. So if you were letting your organs go away and everything else, who will be your witnesses, then probably you can do something, but you cannot do it. And even if you manage to separate yourself from your body, which you cannot, then at least Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching and there are angels that are writing everything. So the point that we need to understand is we cannot escape and we cannot think. And sometimes people take these things very casually. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I will say this or I will do that. And I'm so smart and all of this. If you are a true believer, then there is no running away. This is the core message. So we have to be always conscious of what we do all the time. And um, and because, you know, there is, we won't be able to hide it. Our own body parts will be witnesses against us. I hope this point is clear. Moving forward. وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَتَمَسْنَا عَلَىٰ عَيُّنِهِمْ and if we willed, we would have surely uh, obliter obliterated, meaning hidden over your eyes or close your eyes. Then they would race to find the path. Then now how would they see? How could they see? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, he could have, you know, blinded us so that we don't even find what is the right path and what is the right thing to do. But he did not. He gave us the option. We have our eyes open. We are getting all these messages. We have the signs. We all watch the world and systems around us. We can make a choice. If we just use our brain, we can become better Muslims. <laughs> so 
And if we build, then surely would have transformed them in their places, then not they would have been able to proceed and not return. We could have been turned into a vegetable. We could have been turned into immobile. And by the way, there are people, if you search for some diseases and those things, people are not able to move. So what Allah SWT is saying, he could have made us helpless in this world. He could have blinded all these people who are being arrogant against Islam, who are being arrogant against the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even today, those people who are all arrogant, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala can, um, can easily overcome them out of their arrogance. It can be all suppressed. They can be held into a corner and blocked. They can all be paralyzed and they will not be able to move. People do get paralyzed, right? They do get all these diseases. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning them that yes, he controls everything. So we better not try to be arrogant and better not try to um, cross the limits and cross our boundaries. This is all um, very much possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ نُؤَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ this is very, very important. And he whom we grant him a long life, we reverse him in the creation. Then will not they use their intellect? Who will explain this ayah to me? What do you understand? When Allah SWT says that when somebody reaches a long life or those people who have a long life, they are reversed in creation. Then will they not use their intellect? Abdullah, go ahead. What do you understand from this ayah? Yeah, sir. Uh, so uh, when we are like growing up, first we are like uh, when we are born and we then start to walk, we, uh, we learn to talk and stuff. And like first we are weak and we are dependent on our parents. And uh, gradually when we uh, age, we become uh, adults, we are young and strong and everything. And then after a certain age of like 40 or 50, uh, and above, we start to uh, get white hair and we start to like our skin gets uh, dull and stuff and uh, our bones get weak and like we are uh, slowly uh, uh, becoming like babies. So we th then we need support from uh, people around us and stuff. So that means uh, a reverse in life. Jazakallah khairan. Um, any other point from anyone? Jazakallah khairan, uh, Abdullah. I think uh, you already presented the next slide. So I don't need to add. This is exactly what the point was. So the life cycle of human beings itself is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are born weak and dependent uh, as a kid on our parents. Then we go and we reach our maximum strongest in the middle years. And then we return back to weakness. And again, we are dependent on others, right? So this is the life cycle. The message from this one is um, we should not be arrogant when we are at the peak of our power. When we are young, that's where the arrogance starts to kick in. I'm powerful. I'm this. I have achieved this. I am so smart. And I have this experience. I have so much wealth. I have this much money. Um, I can do whatever I want. And, you know, um, and that's when people are cruel to others. I don't need to follow the guidance. I mean, I have everything already. If Allah SWT kept me so well here, then he will keep me in the Akhra. Why should I do this? Why should I do that? So this is a reality of life. In order to understand this point as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ourselves, we don't need to reach old age. We don't need to. We see old people around us. We know we will turn weak. So while shaitan is putting this whisper of arrogance in our mind, oh, you are something. You are powerful. Oh, no, you should not do that. Crush this guy. Who's in front of you? Ah, no, no, no. You don't need to even worry. I mean, this guy, he should not, I mean, how, how dare he spoke to me like this? I will just give him a punch and show him, you know, who's who's stronger and how dare, you know? So this thing, this thinking, this thinking of arrogance and power and I am something and I will do this. I can do this. And I have so many people and I have a big organization and I'm so powerful and I'm in government and I am in that, I am the, that. All of this will go back. And for this, we don't have to reach the old age. We just have to observe around. We just have to look at people. Just look at the old people. Go to the mosque, look at the old people. Sometimes they need a wheelchair. Sometimes they need a chair. And sometimes they need sitting. Sometimes they need help. Just like when we were kids and when we were yeah, yeah, weak. So, you know, the, the human beings, um, uh, children or offsprings are the weakest in nature. 
if you look at all the other creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their offspring starts to become independent faster. When you see the cracking of the egg from the bird, the bird feeds and then they, you know, jump off and they, so they're on their own. Similarly, if you look at any National Geographic video on animals and how they are breeding and how it's, uh, how their newborns are coming out and how they are um, becoming independent so fast, you will find that human beings are the weakest. Our kids and children are dependent on us until I don't know what age, right? So they cannot, I mean, if you leave them uh, on the street, then they cannot survive on their own. They need help. They are dependent. Um, so when we are at our strongest point in age, we should not be arrogant. This is the lesson. We should take lesson from others. We will become weak if we live long enough. Otherwise, if we die earlier, then what's the point of arrogance anyways? Because we'll be going in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no point of arrogance when you are at, you know, at your peak um, in terms of power, in terms of wealth, in terms of what you can do, um, because eventually you will be returned. And this again is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to ask for forgiveness, be humble and follow the guidance moving forward. وَمَا أَلَّمْنَا هُشْشِعْرَ وَمَا يَمْبَغِي لَهُ and not we taught him the poetry and not it is befitting for him. Now they used to say different arguments coming against the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Na'uzubillah, he's a poet. Na'uzubillah, he's not uh, of sound minor. All of these things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. That it's not like he's speaking poetry in front of you. It's not befitting. He's the messenger. In huwa illa dhikrum wa quranum mubeen. It is not except a reminder and a clear, clear Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the truth. This is Quran al-Furqan. This is the one that will tell you what is right, what is wrong. It's not poetry. It's not something that he made up himself. It's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, and he's sending our user manual or our instructions on how we should operate. He's the creator. He knows how best we should operate. So this is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. لِيُنْ ذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيًّا وَيَحِقَّ to warn him who is alive and maybe prove true the word against the disbelievers. This is a warning for the person who is alive. Actually, if you have a sign of life and actually if you are a sound mind, then you will start to think about this message. Those people who are not thinking, they are considered dead almost uh, in front of Allah. They are already dead if they are not listening. And they are deaf and they are blind as we have seen it multiple times as well in Quran. The way Allah SWT addresses those people who are not following the guidance, who are not, it's as if they didn't even listen, as if they didn't even see. They cannot even see the signs. So here, those people who are alive means their heart, it is alive. That will, those people will receive the message and they will follow the guidance. The rest are already considered dead. Do not they see that we have created for them from what have made our hands cattle? Then they for them are the owners. Now this is a beautiful ayah showing us again a fact and reality of this world. Um, when we started this lesson, there was an ayah that came and Allah SWT asked us to look at all the signs around us that whatever is being revealed to us is coming from Allah SWT and we should believe in Allah SWT. All these signs are showing. Now here Allah SWT is guiding us towards another fact that Allah SWT has creating, created so much um, different types of creation and animals and how he has made all of them subdued with us. How he has given control to human beings of all these animals and how we benefit from all of them in this ayah. And we have tamed them for them. All these animals, human beings are able to control them. So some of them, they ride them and some of them, they eat. There are different benefits that we take from animals all around the world, right? And for them, there are benefits and drinks, the milk from the cows and the sheep and all of this. So will not they give thanks? All Allah SWT is saying for us to say, Alhamdulillah. Because this, human beings could not have done themselves. So just imagine this. Okay, who will explain this slide to me? You've already discussed part of it. What do you see from the slide and what do you get? Who will explain the slide? 
Yes, Abdullah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so, sir, uh, there is uh, on the right bottom, uh, there is an elephant baby and there are some people. So uh, I want to explain this picture. Like it's the biggest of creation, uh, like uh, it's the biggest animal on land. Uh, so we can even uh, like... Uh, play with them like it's it's some kind of a ball and they're like uh, playing football uh, and they have sticks in their hands so yeah even the uh, like biggest of creation we can uh, be with them and even lion uh, it's uh, one of the most fierce animal we uh, we can still like uh, understand him when he wants to play or uh, how we can like uh, tackle him to be close to him and stuff uh, so, yeah. and Abdullah. Excellent. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all the creatures. And he has created human beings with these capabilities where we can even tame and control different types of animals which are even much more powerful than us. Physically much more stronger than us. I mean, horse riding. I don't know how many of you have tried, but you should try once in a lifetime. You should try to be close to a horse and try to sit on the horse. The feeling that you get, the strength of horse and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it under our control is in itself phenomenal. And if you look at these different creatures and their types, this in itself is a sign of our creator, amazing creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at how we are able to control while we are not that physically strong, and if you just look at the bottom left picture where there's a herd shown, there are different sheep and goats and all of those animals and there's a, uh, there's a donkey on which there's a guy sitting on. If you just count them, those sheep and goats, imagine if they start to all run in a different direction. Then can these two people control them and bring them back? No. They cannot bring them back, right? They're only two. Which In which direction they will run? If in this play, picture on the bottom left side, all these animals that are there, the sheep and the goats and, you know, if they start all to run in a different direction, how will these two people gather them back? They cannot. They cannot. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them under control of these two people that you see in the picture. If a lion decides to attack this guy, he cannot survive. If this horse decides to throw this guy off his back in the middle, he cannot control. This is a baby elephant. Imagine a huge size elephant that I use in different places. Imagine a circus place where different animals are controlled and tamed. If this these animals decide and they go rogue and they just go out of and they went just crazy, they, none of us, we, we won't be able to control them. And there are multiple benefits from the animals that we get. Uh, much more powerful. They are camels, camel milk, um, cows, buffaloes, um, different, different, multiple, multiple, multiple exams, examples that are all, all around us, you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting this fact that he has created all this creation and given it under control of human beings. And at the end, we are not even thankful. We don't even say Alhamdulillah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to thank him for all his blessings. They, all of them could have been weak and we, we could have controlled them, but they are so powerful Yet we are controlling them. That shows, this is a fact. I mean, controlling a weak animal, for example, sheep or goat, you can still say, oh, they are weak, timid, or a cat, small cat, whatever. But when you talk about big animals, powerful animals, and human beings are able to control them, tame them, fight them, kill them, all of this, this tells you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is enabling us beyond our capabilities, beyond our strength to control those animals. And we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to be thankful to someone, first, of course, you have to believe them. So we should believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all signs for us to look around. I hope this point is clear. So this is a blessing. The action for us is a blessing and a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to be thankful. Moving forward. What the min dunillahi la'allahum yunsarun. But they have taken besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gods that they may be held. Now look at those, this mankind. They have taken gods other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After all these signs, after all these things. La nasrahum rahum lahum jundum 
not they are able to help them but they for them are hosts and they will be brought in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whosoever you are calling your false gods they cannot even help themselves how come you can even worship someone else how you can follow someone else not just the gods made out of stone we have discussed it multiple times in our class even the gods that we have in our heads the people whom we think they are the ones who are providing us this my boss my this my governor this powerful prime minister minister uh, this teacher this principal they are doing this and that no they are all here as a network for yes for us to use and as a resource but the source of all benefit is allah subhanahu wa taala always remember this so we we because sometimes we create gods in our heads as well and we just blindly follow them the influencers the celebrities oh my god you went crazy on them they themselves you know cannot control their lives fala yah zun ka qawluhum so let not grieve you their speech now allah subhanahu wa taala is reassuring the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with all the opposition that he was facing from the disbelievers inna na'lamu ma yusirruna wa ma yu'linun indeed we know what they conceal and what they declare so they will be brought to justice by allah subhanahu wa taala the holy prophet used to grieve he used to be sad uh, on the opposition because they were not believing him and he knew this is the truth awalam yaral insanu anna khalaqnahu min nutfatin fa iza huwa khasimum mubin now allah subhanahu wa taala is reminding men of their reality how what was what is their starting point does not see the man that we created him from a semen drop a drop of semen then behold he is an opponent he is a clear opponent how come they are opposing the opposing the religion of allah subhanahu wa taala how come they are opposing the messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is their even um their significance they are nothing they are just created from a drop of semen that passes from a male to a female from a from their father to the mother and that's how they um they are being born and that's how they are created inside the womb of their mother so what is there even they are insignificant and they have the arrogance of opposing the religion the islam and they have the arrogance of opposing the prophet uh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and opposing the religion of allah subhanahu wa taala how come i mean look at their starting point wazaraba lana masalan wa nasiya khalqa and he sets forth for us an example and forgets his own creation so now this is they are saying things they used to say different things and be creative about allah subhanahu wa taala and different gods and their types and everything and nauzubillah the angels are the daughters of allah subhanahu wa taala and all of these things they used to create allah subhanahu wa taala is saying this is what they are saying and they have forgotten their own creation how they were born qala may yuhyil izama wa hiya ramim he says who will give life to the bones while they are decomposed so this is their argument how will we be brought back, back to life just see look at your creation how were you born the first time what is your significance the first time how the the process of um how a baby is born if you look at it you will realize yes allah subhanahu wa taala can raise us back again qul yuhyi allazi ansha'aha awwala marra say he will give them life who is the one who produced them the first time so the answer to that question is once we are in their graves and we are dead and we are turned into sand and we have decomposed then who will give us life tell them the same lord the same allah subhanahu wa taala who gave you life the first time out of nothing wa huwa bi kulli khalqin alim and he is of every creation all knower nil ladhi ja'ala lakum min min ash-shajar al-akhdari naran fa iza antum minhu tuqinun this is one of the facts the one who made for you from the tree a green tree fire when we cut the wood from a tree that has green leaves it has water inside yet when you cut the wood and then you try to burn the fire the fire comes out so he can turn a green tree a green tree into a fire behold you from it ignite so you you know this as a fact you ignite a fire from this so just like that allah subhanahu wa taala has power over everything aw laysa allazi khalaqa as-samawati wal arda bi qadirin ala an yakhluqa misluhum mislahum um it is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to do create the 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 like of them so if allah subhanahu wa taala has created um the heavens and the earth then of course he can create the like of anything else he is the one who is creator bala yes indeed wa huwal khalaqul alim and he is the supreme creator and all knower supreme creator khalaqul alim and he knows everything he has knowledge of everything so when he creates he has knowledge of everything and that knowledge parts of it are getting revealed to us and science continues to appreciate everything that is mentioned in the quran as well last two ayahs for today 
إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون only his command when he intends anything that he says be it and it happens so it's a simple command and an instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything to happen in this world he has absolute knowledge he is the supreme creator he can give life to anyone he can take away life from anyone so it's a very simple simple word or a simple instruction and things get done fa subhan allazi bi yadihi malakutu so glory be to the one who in whose hand is the dominion of all things and to him you will be returned. He is the owner. He is the malik. He is the rightful owner of everything. We come in this world and we start believing, oh, we own something. This is my car. This is my house. This is my wealth. This is my money. And then the fact of life, we grow old, we become weak, we are dependent. And then when we die, we go empty handed. So there is nothing as such as mine. Please be clear. You don't own anything. We don't own anything. We die empty handed. We come in this world like a baby dependent. Someone has to feed us. Someone has to do something. We start to grow. And then yes, Allah SWT gives us a few things. But these are for a limited time as a test. What will we do with them? If we start becoming arrogant and saying, this is mine, mine, mine and my wealth and I own and this and that. And we get into this mindset of I am something because I have this will, because I have this power and because I, I decide what, you know, things will happen, then we are um, being uh, foolish to ourselves because uh, eventually um, nothing, uh, I mean, we just go empty-handed and we die and we are just thrown or, you know, laid down in the grave as well. So, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He is the owner of everything. He is the one who has um, the dominion he has the power over everything, the heavens and the earth and everything that is created. So Alhamdulillah, this marks the end of today's lesson. We'll quickly uh, quickly go through the key actions. The first action that we went through, through was related to spending. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you usually spend at that moment, it seems like the wealth is decreasing and the money is decreasing. However, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he, he will return it to us multiplied in this world. And in the hereafter as well as multiple rewards. However, shaitan puts this verse in our mind. Don't spend in the way of Allah especially. Oh, because you have this expense coming in. You have to pay that bill. Do that. Oh, how come? And this and that. But when we are spending it on the desires or on bad things, he just lets you spend and you, you have no problem. Important thing to know is we should spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will increase and it will multiply. The amount doesn't matter. Consistency matters. Consistently give someone. Try to find a family or relatives or someone or neighbors or someone who you can help and do it on a consistent basis, add their risk to your risk so that Allah SWT continues to give you more and more so that you can help people. Because if you stop the risk, then Allah SWT can also stop your risk and then give them from other sides as well. So try to do that. Um, Abdullah, your hand is raised. Do you have a comment? Yes, sir. I have another question, yes. uh, if it's okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so, sir, before uh, giving to the people can we judge them like uh, uh, in my country there are a lot of uh, fake people like we call it scam or uh, okay there is a one word i cannot uh, think of it but yeah so can we like judge a person before giving uh, so that it goes to the right person who is really haqdar yes, like yes. Who, yeah so you mean that how can we is it allowed that we ensure that the money is going to the deserving person right Yes, sir. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So it's a very good question. You should do verification. Yes. Um, and after doing some verification, if you help someone and still they are deceiving, then it is on their part. Your intention should be clear. Of course, you should not just spend and start to give away whatever. But if someone comes to your door or if someone comes to your car or if someone comes and asks for help. And at that point in time, um, it is difficult to verify, for example, let's say, or even in a case where you have done your verification, let's say, and um, based on that verification, um, uh, you you think that it is right to help and you help them while they were still deceiving you, right? And if someone else deceives, then it is on their own. That will be written in their own accountability. They will go to their, they will die in their own, your, their own graves. If you help someone, after doing verification, or even if you did, do not have, in that situation, you cannot verify and you still help them, then you will get the reward of what you did. 
So you don't need to worry about it. Sometimes people worry too much. Oh, is this the right person? Is this this? And, and then they end up not helping them. And this can also be a ploy of shaitan. You have to clear your intention, clear your heart. If you can verify, that's very good. You should verify, right? But if you are in a situation where you cannot verify and the need seems genuine and you help them, by clearing up your heart, you will get the desired reward. Then you don't have to think multiple times, oh, should I have done, done that? And maybe that guy was deceiving and somebody tells you, no, don't go there. You purify your intention. You spend in the way of Allah SWT to please him and you help the other person, you will get your reward in this life and in the hereafter. If they are deceiving, they will deserve what they are doing accordingly. I hope this point is clear. Okay. Um, the next action. Yeah. Okay, excellent. The next action for today uh, was related to the fact that on the day of judgment, our mouths will be shut and our body parts will be witnesses against what we did. Our eyes will be telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we watched that we were not supposed to do. Our ears will be telling us what we heard um, that we were not supposed to do. Um, our hands and legs will be telling us what we did, in which direction we went and what we did. So basically there is no running away. The summary of this point is we have to be always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what we are doing. And if we are, if our actions and whatever we are doing and thinking is taking us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam or taking us away. So we have to be always, always conscious. Our own body will be witnessed against us on the day of judgment while we will be desperately trying to save ourselves because hellfire will be in front of us, punishment will be in front of us and we'll be desperate to save ourselves but we will not be able to because our own body that we carry around in this entire life and we cannot separate ourselves from will start to become a witness against us. The third point for today which was related to a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the life cycle of human beings. We start off weak, dependent on our parents. We need to be fed and everything. Then we reach our peak age of youth. And that's where we think that we are so powerful and we have all the wealth and we have control and we, we are deciding stuff. And then we go back to being weak. This is a fact for which we don't need to reach an old age to appreciate that, yes, this is something that happens, right? So the action for, for on this point for us was we should not be arrogant when we are on the peak of our power. We should not think, oh, I'm this, I'm that, and everything. Always stay humble. Because if you reach old age and you don't die earlier, then you will be becoming weak and dependent again. So don't, so stay humble, help others, and don't be arrogant. And this is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to follow the guidance and always stay humble and remember the reality and the eventual reality. Eventual reality is either you will die or you will reach your old age in which you will be weak and dependent. If you have this mindset, then it will keep you grounded and humble and also uh, enable you to follow the guidance because you know that, you know, I cannot, I cannot be arrogant. And of course, I mean, this is, this is my return and this is my eventual journey. Moving forward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subdued the animals to human beings. And it's a fact. And we know there are multiple benefits that we get out of these different animals or creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has made under our control because there are more powerful animals um, or creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to control that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not given in our control, we would never be able to. Imagine controlling a powerful horse or an elephant or a lion or but, but we are able to do or even a herd of sheep where a single sheep can be seen as oh it's so timid and we can control and we can you know even slaughter them but imagine this picture that we discussed, there were two people controlling this herd. If this herd or these animals decide to run in all different directions, they won't be able to control. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given all of these animals and many of them are beyond our power and capability. They are much more stronger than us, but yet we are able to control them and get benefits from them. So these are blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to be thankful to him. So at least we should say, Alhamdulillah for all these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. And of course, to say Alhamdulillah, you need to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Um, uh, so, so this is the crux of this point. This marks the end of today's lesson. Are there any comments, any points before we close today's class? Yes, Abdullah, you have your hand raised. Go ahead. Yeah, so sir, I wanted to say that uh, okay, the time of Asr has gone ahead. So if we can continue uh, to 4 p.m. like in my oh. country, so 
yeah it will be fine okay i, I just wanted to tell you for all i think this time works for all i would want to stick because then the time comes back and forth and we have to change the timings of the class i would rather stick to this time it works for everyone okay sure yeah it's fine that's fine again all right okay, but jazakallah no. for cooperating yeah. before yeah, yeah. سبحان الله و بحمده سبحانك اللهم و بحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك و اتوب اليك purity belongs to allah subhanahu wa taala and all praise be to him purity belongs to you o oh allah and all praise be to you i bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides you i beg forgiveness from you and i repent before you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my dear brothers inshallah i will see you next week same time wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sir